you in this series of tutorials designed to help you learn to program using TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email mailing list, then please go to markplex.com, that's M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X.com and sign up for the uh, email list and I'll be happy to let you know when I create new programs or tutorials. So in today's tutorial, tutorial 42, we're going to be drawing lines and text objects on a chart and uh, I'll be showing you one or two pitfalls and so on that we can find doing that. So we're going to be working on a show me study which I've called tutorial 42 and what we're going to do to start with is just simply draw a line. So we're going to draw a line, let's create a bit of space here, equals TL, this is the function that we use to draw lines and we're going to draw that from the date of the current bar, the time of the current bar and the low D of yesterday or the low of yesterday. I'm going to draw that to the date of the current bar and then the time of the session end which we call which is session end time and that is the first regular session and uh, if you I'm familiar with session end time then just right click it when you type this in yourself and you'll be able to find out all about it and then again the low of yesterday and uh, I've got everything there just need to close a bracket a semicolon and then I'm going to press F3 to verify it and uh, then we're just going to make sure that that is applied to a one minute IBM chart so I'm going to say insert show me apply that to the chart and as you can see we're getting uh, a line which if we just check here the low of yesterday seems to be pretty accurate there and then if we just go back in time we'll see if the uh, the low in other words this this low here corresponds to the low of the previous day and uh, looks like it does if we just take a quick eyeball here however um, this is not necessarily all that it seems because what's happening here is if we just go back to the program is TradeStation is actually drawing a new line on every single bar so we can't really uh, see that because the lines are being drawn on top of each other but if we were to go to our chart and just click on the line and move them what we'd actually find is that we got uh, a line drawn for every single bar of that day. Now you know that might not be a problem in this particular case but in a more complicated program then that is using processing power that really need not be used and uh, I can just demonstrate that further by uh, just putting a text object every time we draw a line and uh, we can do that by saying value for equals text new date, time, I'm going to put the, uh, the location of this text object uh, at the low of yesterday and I'm just going to move it slightly below that so this is an IBM chart so I'm just going to move it 10 cents below and what we're going to put in the text object is actually the ID of the the line which is uh, we've seen above value 3. Now um, with text new we actually have to uh, use a string in this part of the function so with a number we convert it to a string using num to string and the first part of that as I say is the ID of the line which we've set above here to be value 3 and the next part is the number of decimal places and we're just going to make that 0 and I'm just going to close bracket there, semicolon, and press F3. Now this is going to show us actually the IDs of the line and as you can see it's uh, rather difficult to, to read so what we're going to do is just widen the bars apart so we can start reading those lines and what you can see here is that every single bar we're effectively drawing a new line and the ID of that line is being incremented. 
So we need to do something about that. And uh, so what I'm going to do in the next part of this tutorial is I'm just going to comment out this, just put um, these curly brackets around it. Okay, so I'm going to copy the program into tutorial 42 and uh, just going to verify that. And then we can just go and look at the chart and see uh, exactly what it has done. So let's just uh, combine, condense the lot the bars a little bit and um, what we're doing in this case uh, instead of uh, plotting a line at yesterday's low we're plotting a line at yesterday's high and you can see here if we just scan back um, that looks like it is doing that correctly we could just for example check this line here and yeah that looks correct what I'm also doing is plotting the the value of the line and also this number here is the ID of the line. So let's just check the value there is indeed 127.43. And uh, we can see that this is line 8. Now this is what we're doing on all uh, historic lines. In other words, where today is not the current day. But on the current day, what we're doing is we are drawing a the, the text ID of the line on every single bar. So let's just uh, separate the lines and if we zoom in here we'll see that actually uh, the bar the number is 9 so in other words we are not drawing a new line in every bar what we're doing is extending the current line so let's go and have a look at the program and uh, I will attempt to explain how that is working so first of all we're looking at uh, a bar where the date of this bar is not the same as the date of the previous bar and this occurs when we get a new day and uh, show you what I mean here is for example the date of this bar is the 24th the date of this bar is the 23rd so we know we have a new a new day there and uh, what we're doing each new day is we're drawing a line from uh, the date and time of the current bar to the date to session end time at the high of the day value similarly we're doing that with the uh, we're printing the text value of the high of the day and we're also printing the text value of value 1 which is the ID of this line and that is the 9 or the 8 or the 7 that I just showed you. We're also setting the color of this uh, number here representing the ID and we're doing that using text set color value 5 being the ID of that particular text object. So that takes care of most of the chart but if the date is equal to the current date um, then what we're going to do is we need to extend the line that is already there and uh, so what we do we say if date is equal to current date we also say if value 1 and value 2 and are uh, greater than 0 in other words we have actually got these text objects before we draw them and incidentally this is a, a common mistake of trying to uh, change a text object that is non-existent and it will result in uh, an error with the uh, drawing objects and that will suddenly mean that you'll look at your chart and there won't be any drawing objects on there anymore so it's always a good idea to test that the drawing object objects exist before trying to change them and then we're saying the bar status so we're saying that this is not one of the ticks within the bar just so that we don't go through and do this every single tick uh, and then what we're doing we're saying value 11 we're setting the end of the uh, the line to the current uh, date and time and uh, we're also changing the location of the lines value to the uh, the date and time but uh, what we're doing with value 5 which if you recall is the idea of the line in order to demonstrate that this thing is actually not drawing a new line on every single bar what I've had this do is actually plot this on every single bar and uh, we're actually drawing a new text object on each bar and uh, setting the color of it to red so that is why on the uh, the current date the last uh, the last day that we're seeing on the chart we get the 99999 because I just wanted to do that as a, a demonstration to show you that um, we're not drawing multiple lines and uh, uh, again we don't do that with the the um, text object showing the value of the line we're just putting that on the effectively on the last bar on the chart anyway um, I hope uh, that was of use to you and uh, again if you're not on our email mailing list then please go to markplex.com -E and join the list. Thank you.